We're here at the top of Wainui Hill and this gives us a fantastic view of Wellington, Wellington Harbour and the Hutt Valley. And one of the most obvious striking features of the landscape here is the line of hills on the far side of the Hutt Valley. It shows us where the Wellington Fault has uplifted the land. So the Wellington Fault is one of the biggest geological features in the Wellington region. It is one of New Zealand's greatest geological hazards because it runs through such a highly populated area. So today we're going to explore the Wellington Fault. I'm going to take you to a couple of locations where uh, you can see it up close and see some interesting features. We're going to go to Upper Hutt and then we'll follow the Hutt Valley down into Wellington to see the fault in various aspects. As we come into California Drive, we are right on the Wellington Fault and this strip of grass in the middle of the road is the line of the fault itself and it was built this way specially to keep the houses from being right on top of the fault in case it ruptures one day and pulls the houses to pieces. So the houses are set apart um, and this is just a, a really good example of good planning in a, a high risk area for earthquakes. We've arrived in California Park in Upper Hutt and this is probably for me the best place in the Wellington region to see the Wellington Fault. Here in California Park there are a few features which stand out really clearly. First of all the line of the fault, the fault trace or the fault scarp is really straight and to see that really well what I'm going to do is pop up this drone into the sky and see if we can trace it right uh, across the street in the park. Great view of the fault, it's like an absolute straight line through the park and you can see California Drive how the fault goes right down the middle of that street. Now we're going to keep moving across towards Harcourt Park. So we've come through towards the Hutt River and you can see the footbridge that's going across the river. Now the Hutt River has actually cut through the Wellington Fault and there is a cliff on one side but it's all hidden from where I'm standing by vegetation. Um, so although it's covered with vegetation I can actually see um, a kind of clean rock face um, with a very steep sort of line onto the right hand side of it which is where the rock types change. So that right in the middle of the view is the Wellington Fault and up above it you can see the slope of the Wellington Fault going down to one side. So we've come across the footbridge to Harcourt Park there you can see the line of the Wellington Fault along the scarp and over on this side as we come into Harcourt Park we can see that the ground is going up in steps. So these are also river terraces. Actually from here I can see one, two, three, at least four of them. Where we're going to go now is to look at what happens to the river terraces um, where the fault runs through them at a right angle. This path through Harcourt Park towards the playground is right on top of the Wellington Fault and we can see that because at the top of the park here you can see how the land on the left hand side slopes down towards the right. That's the same fault scarp that we've seen before. So when we look at the ground on either side of the fault we can see that it is quite different. This side, on the western side, we have just flat land and then on the eastern side it's quite slopy. So here we see the slope coming in towards the fault, meeting the path about here and then up in the distance is the continuation of the slope showing that it has been offset and uplifted by the Wellington Fault. This is telling us that the Wellington Fault has pushed the land sideways 
as well as up on one side. These two terraces have been pushed apart by perhaps 35 metres or so, give or take, and that wouldn't have happened in one earthquake. It would be several earthquakes because we think that the Wellington Fault might move the land sideways during an earthquake by about five metres. Uh, so we're finished with Harcourt Park now and we're going to go back in the car and uh, drive towards Wellington with a few stop-offs on the way to see how the Wellington Fault looks in different parts of the landscape down the road. The Hutt River mostly follows a line right along the Wellington Fault. Here at Mains Rock we've got a place where we can stand on some of the rocks that are really really close to the fault and Something that we can see straight away is that these rocks are really broken. They're fractured, they're softened up, and that's because of the crushing effect of the fault moving multiple times in big earthquakes and rupturing along its length. So here we are in the hut, driving along the hut road, and we are actually right beside the Wellington Fault. The road is on the uplifted side and you can see that the roofs of the houses are lower down so the fault is running right through just in front of those houses. Um, we are now on the top of Wadestown and from here we can look right down on Thorndon which is the entrance to Wellington and the Wellington fault runs right through this entry point to the city. It runs under the motorway, across the railway, right through the ferry terminal and also over the water supply. So this means that Wellington is very vulnerable because its main entranceway for all of these transport services and water services is right on top of the Wellington Fault. And a lot of work has been done by engineers and by planners to reinforce the infrastructure here to make it agile and flexible so that there'd be a quick recovery after a big earthquake. So that train actually is going right across the Wellington Fault right now. So the Wellington Fault cuts through where the motorway is just at the point where the train is going underneath. And you can see those horizontal slabs just at the top of the motorway pillars and those slabs are called catchers. They're designed to hold the motorway sections up if the fault were to rupture and basically pull the ground apart. It would stop the, the main segments of the motorway from collapsing down um, onto the ground. So our final stop is here at Wrights Hill at the lookout and it is a stunning perspective on Wellington. There's the harbour, there's the city and right on the edge of the harbour you can see the line of the Wellington Fault. The western hills have been lifted up above um, sea level to about 400 metres high. The equivalent level is 300 metres below the harbour. So over the life of the Wellington Fault, which might be very roughly a million years or so, um, there's been 700 metres of vertical displacement along the Wellington Fault. And that will also translate into several kilometres of horizontal movement, with the western side going to the north and the eastern side being pushed to the south. So this is our final destination for the uh, tour of the Wellington Fault and um, it's certainly worth remembering that we're in an area which has more than one large active fault in it and so being prepared for earthquakes, having a plan, having a kit, going online to look at the best information to be prepared is definitely the thing to do if you live or visit Wellington City.